Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin again. Um, and today I'm gonna talk to you about a company called ASML Holding and um, how much I invested in that company and how, what I think it has for its future basically. Uh, the company was founded in 1984. Um, it currently has over 40,000 employees, so it's a very large company. Um, it's a NASDAQ and uh, the ticker is ASML. And the CEO is Peter Wenrick, W-E-N-N-I-C-K, Peter Wenrick. Um, in, in, in the first part of January, right after the new year, I purchased uh, three shares of ASML holdings for $729.35 each. At purchase, the total value of these stocks was uh, $2,176.17. So I went into this company with three shares with just over two grand. Um, as of now, which today is uh, the 22nd of March, uh, the price per share is now $990.79. So my total position size right now is $2,972.37. So, so far I've made a profit of $261.44 per share for a total of net profit, which, which means I'm 27% on the upside on this particular stock. And this happened just over an 11 week period. So that, I feel that's pretty good under the circumstances. Um, now this is another company that's going to make AI possible. And it's one of the backbone companies of AI 2.0. So if you guys are looking for a good AI stock, this is something you should probably take a look at. Um, it's a, it's a Dutch company and it makes the machines, uh, uh, you, um, you remember I talked a couple days ago about Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSM. It makes the machines for TSM um, that they use to make the chips. So this is the company that actually makes the machines so semiconductor companies can, can do these, um, can make their chips. Um, and um, right now they're making high-end chips that use a, a technology called Extreme Ultraviolet technology or EUV um, it's a very advanced system um, and, and as far as these machines are basically they're a miracle of science I mean they do just the, 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 the level of what goes into making these is just unbelievable um, before we can appreciate the technology that goes into making the machines uh, I'm gonna try to explain a little bit about how these chips are made so you'll understand what they you know what it would take to do something like this um, Individual chips are made from wafers, okay? And each wafer is made up of a dozens of uh, layers. So, th so yeah, actually it's more like a couple hundred layers. Um, each layer is etched um, into a lot of different layers and then, sam and then they're all sandwiched together. Um, millions of transistors are etched onto each chip and every single one must work for the highest end chips. So, uh, okay, to make better chips, the transistors need to get smaller. I'm going to tell you how small in a minute. Um, during the 1990s, cutting edge chips had transistors that were 350 nanometers. Um, and I think a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So think of a meter and then think of a billionth of it and that's a nanometer. So they're originally 350 nanometers. Now, chips like NVIDIA's uh, H100, they use three nanometer transistors. Um, three nanometer chips takes us into territory that's difficult to grasp. I mean, the level of technology that has, you know, to make these is just incredible, like I mentioned before. Um, but uh, one, just think of it like this, a single silicon atom, you've, if, if you know anything about science, you know what an atom is. Um, and it has a size of about, about two nanometers. Um, but uh, to put things in perspective, so you're almost talking about chips that are the size of an atom you know, just a little bit bigger. So three nanometers is about the width of 15 silicone atoms lined up side by side. I mean, that's how small these are. Um, if you can imagine, it's extremely difficult to etch something that's that small. And the, But that's what ASML's EUV machine does. Like I said, it's called Extreme Ultraviolet Technology or EUV. Um, and that's what the, the machines that ASML make are able to do this. So, these machines are basically, okay, they, they, they blast particles of molten tin with a laser. 
Um, their, their machine fires lasers and droplets of molten pin. This constant stream of tin reacts with the laser and emits EUV rays. I know that's a lot too much for you to understand, but if you're just investing it, you don't have to worry about it. I just wanted to give you an idea of what you're investing in and how complicated the process is. So if, if you're confused, I did my job, I guess. Um, the wavelengths of these rays are so small that they're even absorbed by air. That gives you an idea how small they are. Air can actually absorb them. Um, that's why this machine has to operate in a perfect vacuum. So they have to make these machines just right, or they just won't work. Um, it, it then uses the world's flattest mirrors to redirect the EUV light to the water. Uh, the beams of light are held steady and the wafer is moved to allow the etching to occur. Um, each wafer has hundreds of chips. Remember I was telling you before, e each, there's hundreds of chips that make up one wafer. And each chip has billions of transistors. Um, these machines can uh, make up to 3,000 wafers uh, per day. So, so they can really pump these out pretty fast. Um, they, the machines themselves cost, that, that, a, that ASML uses, they cost over $200 million each. And they're the length of a school bus. So you can imagine the size of uh, one of the machines. Um, the final product is transported by three 737 airplanes and 20 semi-trucks. So when they transport these to other places, they, they actually use airplanes and semi-trucks to transport them. Now there's another generation of machines that come out, they're, and they're even more expensive. It's called High Numerical R Aperture, or NA, um, EUV. Uh, it's another EUV machine, but it's High Numerical Aperture, and it's gonna cost about 300 million per machine to produce. Um, ASML is unrivaled in this market. The Japanese company Canon, you, you remember Canon, which is best known for its camera and camera lenses, um, says it's created a machine that will use a die to create two nanometer, nanometer chips in the future. But there's a problem with this because the, mach, if the machine, the, um, let me tell you what the problem is. The, the die method doesn't work as good and, and they're just flimsier chips and they don't work as well. Um, basically, to use die cast to create chips results in a high rate of failure. So if, if um, that means that um, based on this research that Canon's technology probably won't see mass adoption when they use the die method to create these machines. Um, Taiwan, uh, excuse me, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the company I talked about a couple days earlier, um, Samsung and Intel account for more, to, more than 80% of ASML's business. So these are the companies that ASML they pretty much fund ASML. Um, there, there's something really important to understand with ASML. The ASML um, and TSM fates are intertwined. That means TSM needs ASML because they need their machines, and a ASML needs TSM because they buy all, they, they, they buy lots of um, chips from them. Um, and without TSM, ASML's business would crumble. So so and without AMSL, TSM doesn't have a business either. So I just want to make that clear that these companies depend on each other. Um, now let's take a look at their financial position. Um, ASML is in great shape. They have 5.2 billion in cash and 4.7 billion in debt. Um, revenue is up over 20, or 29% over the past year to 28.8 billion. That's their, uh, um, I believe that's their uh, market cap. Um, I don't know if it's their market cap, that just might be their yearly assets. Um, ASML is spending to build out its production of high numerical aperture EUV machines, which are $300 million each. Um, like I mentioned before, um, in 2024, at, at the end of the year, we could see them grow about 38% more than last year because of all the demand for the machines. Um, they have received an uptick in interest in its high NA machine. The, the new one I was telling you about, the new, high numerical aperture machine, they've seen an uptick of interest because of that machine. Um, uh, right now they have a $35 billion, um, $35 billion in backlog orders from its current, for its current machines, not the new ones, but the older $200 million ones. Um, in the first half of 2024, we're gonna see pre-orders for its new high A machines. So right now we're just, as this video is being created, we're just in the very beginning of 2024. I think there's gonna be a lot, a lot of, of demand for these machines and, and the price of, of the stock is gonna go up accordingly. Um, 
this is why I think the, the, the price of ASML is going to explode a lot higher than it is right now. Um, once the orders start coming in, Wall Street analysts are going to start to raise their price targets around ASML. So I think right now it's undervalued, but when Wall Street analysts start pumping it out to everybody and telling them, hey, get in this business, they're about to explode. I think everyone's going to, you know, lots of people are going to do it and it's going to cause the price to, to skyrocket even more than it is now. Um, and if you wait until then, it might be a little too late. Um, you could still probably realize some profits, but they won't be the kind of profits you'd realize if you got in a little earlier. Um, you have a choice to buy ASML today at a discount because it's still under a grand. I mean, it's $990 right now. It's not too bad at all. Um, who knows what the stock can reach by 2030, you know, six, seven grand. I don't know. Um, but it's it's a good it's it's a good bet I believe because it's anything associated with that's a backbone AI 2.0 is is going to be a good good buy. Um, in 2024, we could from where we're at right now, we could easily see a sharp 20% rally the next say nine months um, because Wall Street's going to get word of the new orders for their machines and that's when the price is going to start going up. So. This is an opportunity for much higher gains after that. As the production ramps up for high ending machines and ASML works through its backlog, um, sales can easily reach 32 billion by 2025 with a steady growth of sales of about 15% per year after that. This, this, isn't, this might or might not be the kind of stock that'll make you rich per se, but it is the kind of stock that can give your portfolio a nice little bump, just like the other ones I've recommended. Um, and that's why I'm I'm in it. I'm not in it for a lot of money, but but I, I got a position, and, and you know, it never hurts to make a five or ten x. So we'll see what happens. I'm not saying it will or it won't, but there's a good possibility. Um, anyway, I wanted to say, well, the market cap right now is 387 billion, and it has room to grow to a multi-trillion dollar company within a few years. It, it could be, it could have a as much of a market cap as Nvidia because of what it produces. If the kind of chips it produces and who they sell them to, Taiwan Semiconductor Company. I told you all about that company and they're, they're big time. Um, my personal opinion is this is an easy uh, five to 10 X stock over the next um, three to five years. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this content and I hope you learned something. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel and when you do, please click the little notification bell so you'll get automated um, announcements every time I release a new video. And the next video that I'm going to come up with is very exciting. It's not an AI 2.0 stock, but it's stock that heavily supports the functionality of the crypto ecosystem. And it's something, it's a major, major, major player. And I took a nice position in that stock. I mean, it was, it's pretty, pretty good. And, and I've benefited very well from it so far, especially since I, when I originally got in that stock, I thought I got in late. But I didn't, you know, it's like anything else. You just, if you're in it for the long run and you know what the market's gonna do over the next five or 10 years, it's extremely early, early for the stock. So I, I think you're gonna get a lot of that out of the, that video as well. Um, so enjoy the rest of your day and um, I'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.